So indeed, food matters. Food matters uh, for our health. We need energy, nutrients, proteins for our uh, daily uh, life. Food also matters for connecting with others. Research says that um, the more we share our food with others, with family, with friends, the more likely we have a satisfied and happy life. Food also matters for uh, our culture, our religious uh, practices. But today my talk would be that uh, I want to focus on how food matters to our climate and environment. So the first thing I want to say is to shoot a question to you and think about this. So um, in our daily lives, we use appliances, we use uh, TV, um, uh, mobile phones, computers, refrigerators, etc. We use cars, planes, bikes, uh, public transport to move ourselves. We luckily can eat everyday food. We are living in a house and every day we are consuming household goods such as detergents, furniture, clothing, etc. So he, having in mind these five big consumption areas, what do you think it contributes more to your environmental impact? Thinking in how you, how is your consumption pattern? So the Joint Research Center, which is the entity that um, gives advice to the European Commission when they need to decide about policies, assess the environmental impact of an average um, citizen, European citizen, and assess the environmental impact of the consumption pattern of this uh, average citizen. And what, we what they found is that food contributes as the main driver of this environmental impact. So it contributes about 48% of the environmental impact, followed by housing, mobility, and so on. And this is considered all environmental impacts, but they also checked the 16 environmental impacts. We don't need to go into that, but just to make clear that only three environmental impacts, food is not the driver of the environmental impact. So sometimes, we think that maybe cars are the largest impact or whatever, but food is an impact. But what do we mean with food? So what's in your mind uh, when we think about food? We need to think about the food system. So to have your food on your plate, we need to produce it. So we not need farms, we need to process it, we need to pack it, we need to sell it in retailers, we consume it, but we also need to transport. And we also need to think that in between, there are also food losses and waste along the food supply chain. And for this system to be able to function, we need inputs. And these inputs can be fertilizers, pesticides, but also we need land, we need water, we need natural resources. We need energy, we need fuel along the whole supply chain. At the global scale, has been said that 70% uh, of the global fresh water is used by the uh, food system, 30% of the primary energy is for the food system, and it occupies about 46% of the habitable land. So, okay, we have this input, but also because of uh, the function of our, of our food system, it has some emissions to the air, emissions to to the soil, we have uh, wastewater, and we cause impacts on our environment. And just as an example here, if we think about uh, global emissions, our global food system contributes to one third, as you said, on these emissions. And here, the question or the challenge is like how to reduce this uh, environmental impact from the food system, keep it below our planetary boundaries, and not, uh, not only this, but also we need to make sure that we can, with this food system, we can respond to the food demand of a uh, growing population. Researchers from Oxford University assessed what would happen in the future if no measures are taken with these environmental impacts of the food system. And what they found out is that they can increase between 50 and 92% by 2050. So what actually what they suggest is we need to take action. There is no other way we need to, to act. And, we need to, and then they assess different measures, actions that we need to do. So for example, they checked 
mainly uh, three measures. So one would be what happens if we reduce our food loss and waste, what happens if we improve technology, and what happens if we change our diets, what we eat. So if we want to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, which is the first column, actually what we see here is if it, we change our diet to a flexitarian diet, which means to reduce our animal products, con the consumption of our animal products, um, it would be the measure that has more benefits on reducing the greenhouse gas emission, followed by, by a technology and food waste. But if we look at how to improve or how to reduce the impact of gl global food systems on land, which is the second column, and, blue, and water use, could be we need uh, to improve our technology, so to become more efficient in how we use the natural resources. And second, between second, would be the, the diet, to change diets, and um, to reduce the food loss and waste of our system. So now I will just briefly show some cases of these three types of measures. So um, last year I was involved in a project that we were uh, assessing the environmental impact of uh, uh, an average Spanish diet. And we assessed that uh, the current Spanish diet, so the average, could emit about 1,800 kilo CO2 equivalent per capita per person per year. So this number, what does it mean? No, we, it's, more, it's a lot, it's low. We need a reference point. So researchers have calculated what means the global climate change planetary boundary into what would mean as an emission per capita per year. And this results in our planetary limit for climate change would be that every person per year could emit 1,000 kilos of CO2. So just by assessing only the food that we consume, we are already exceeding the limit. And in this project, what we did also it was to optimize the diet, so minimizing the cost of the diet, increase the nutritional value, and minimizing also the environmental impacts. So with these optimized diets, we made different types of, uh, of diets. But what we, we found, it's like just by changing the way we eat, we could already be, uh, be well, no, within the planetary limit. And here, we don't even consider if we could improve technology or if we could reduce food loss and waste, so we could even improve more. But we still here miss the emissions of the other uh, goods. So when we talk about uh, dietary shift, the key question is from where are you going to get the protein? That's the main question we have. And we usually uh, hear about energy transition, but here what we talk when we talk about food, it's protein transition. So we, we need to reduce animal products, the consumption of animal products. We need to think, okay, where we are we getting our protein? So we need from plants, so we have actually, we don't need to process any food. We can just eat legumes, nuts that are uh, protein, that they have a lot of protein. We also have tofu. Some also maybe want to check insects. Now in Europe, there are four that they are accepted, there are four types of insects. And we also have the alternative meats, which are these two kinds. So these alternative meats are, um, so are products that are uh, based on plants, so maybe soybean, um, microorganisms, or uh, cells, meat cells, and they produce the meat in a, in a lab. And uh, um, well, and now, as you may see in the supermarket, they are increasing also. So this is also a, a new, you know, they're putting new products and new innovation on this. But here, just uh, to highlight that it's important when developing new products to make sure that these products are lower impact than the animal products and that they are healthy and nutritious and that the people accept it. So that what we develop, we don't lose time and we make something that people like, because the issue here when we change diet, we need to like it, and it needs to be accepted by our surroundings. If not, we will not change. Also, uh, considering at the consumer side, we need to empower the consumers, we need to be empowered, and how, we are, we, how are we going to be empowered? Information, and how, uh, so imagine in the future, not, I hope not so, in a few years, that when we go to the groceries, we can see on the pack 
we can see A, B, C, D, E. A is good, E is bad. And when you choose your food, that at least you have the information. Then it's up to you what you want to do with that. And regarding this, also to say that the European Commission is also working on developing, or it's already for a while, working on a framework on how to develop this label, food label for environmental impacts. As well as there are also private um, initiatives that are, are already working on that because it's, it's the way to go. So first we talk about diet. So second point would be about uh, food loss and waste. So we need to be aware of how much food waste uh, we produce in, in Europe. So it's about uh, 59 million tons per year. And that's uh, 131 kilos of waste per person per year. And the most exciting part <laughs> is that 53% is cost at home, is, is produced at home. So again, as consumers, we have a lot of power on what we are eating and how we are eating it. So here, just by being more conscious and aware of that, we can, make, we can make a change. Besides our uh, awareness, we also need governments. So the European Union also has, uh, has committed to, uh, to reduce 50% of the food losses and waste in the European food systems. And, as, and just that you know also, at the Catalan government and the Spanish government, they just have, uh, we just have a law on um, reducing and making plans to avoid the generation of food waste in our food supply chain. So now the stakeholders will need to report on that and make plans. So I think that's uh, a good way to go, but still we are in the, in the beginning of this process. And the last, uh, the last measure to keep the food system uh, below or within the planetary boundary we also need innovation in the, so we are focusing before at the consumer side, but we also need to look at the production side. And there are, in the last years, many innovations. So here I just give some, some examples. So the first one up there, it's an uh, indoor farm. So one way of producing could be indoors and where you have um, a controlled system so that you reduce the use of uh, fertilizers, pesticides, and w you may use uh, less water also. So it has a lot of potential. And they are already working, uh, there is already uh, companies working on that. Then we have regenerative agriculture, which in the last years, there has been, a, we are talking a lot about this, especially with um, the food sector. So it's about um, keeping the soil health, and this means don't disturb the soil, keep it, because it's the basis of our, food, of our food, and keep diversity. So keep your field as much diverse as you, as you can, and this will help to biodiversity also. The third would be this one, which is fertilizers. For producing fertilizers, you need fossil fuel. So we are starting to see that companies are starting to pr try to produce fertilizers with water. So I think that's an advantage because in the food sector, fertilizers has a lot of, of impact. And last but not least, there are also innovative uh, ways of food production, which is the combination of producing food, but also electricity. So what, uh, as a summary, um, I hear what I wanted to say is more, there is no unique solution and we need to collaborate all stakeholders. And we need to see in which moment what, are we go what is useful, what is not, which environmental impact we need to go into. So maybe in an area it's global climate change, there is another, w there is water scarcity, and we, ne we need to, to be focused on the local also. And very important, we need financial mechanisms. So we need all the stakeholders to be involved in this uh, change. And for that, we need to, sub yeah, to help them to go, into, to go all together. And then we also need to monitor and report so to make sure that we are doing the right thing and that we are tracking it and that we are doing well. So how much we are reducing, are we, you well? No, okay, we change action. And the last is very important also that we have uh, legislation. So also on that, the European Union is um, working on making a legislative framework on how to accelerate this um, transition of uh, sustainable food systems.
and this will go very fast because we are now it's just the, the latest stage of this. So we are in a very interesting time for the food sector on how to combat the climate change. And just the last thing, because I think it's also very powerful, we have this kind of tools. The European Commission uh, made available to anyone to calculate your own um, uh, cons uh, your, your footprint of your consumption patterns. So please go to Ministerio de Consumo and then you have a, yeah, you have a science based data. So you need, you, you will be, yeah, you will be aware of how is your impact. What's your impact? Thank you. Thank you.